Uh, we're introducing them to the Petzl XO escape system and the Gem Tour harness. Two major components combined together to provide you with an escape system. Single use, single person load. Uh, we start with a lecture today and then we end up with eight slides, uh, four at the window, four remote tie-offs. Pretty much uh, train you to muscle memory and uh, so you know how to use it, when to use it and how to use it. Started. So I went to, um, went to Nashville, Tennessee for a conference, Firehouse Expo mm -hmm. down there yeah. and uh, I realized that the department gives us a lot of good equipment uh, but everything that we get takes us deeper into a fire. Our gear, our tools, our trucks, everything like that is supplied to get us deeper into the fire to help people out. There's nothing issued by the fire department that helps get a firefighter out. Um, we, some people carry their own rope and webbing and everything like that, but nothing universally issued by the fire department to do that. So we decided, or I came back and said, hey, we need something that every firefighter carries, mandated to carry, that there's a policy with it that can help get them out in case the emergency happens. It didn't take much to convince the chiefs to do it. Um, they, they understand that firefighter safety is a priority for us and it's a priority for them. And, and so when, they, when we've got the idea to them that, hey, everybody needs this, they were on board as long as we could find the funding and assistance to firefighter grant funded by FEMA uh, was able to do that. It took a while because we had some gear modifications that we had to do because we weren't, we weren't set up for it. So we were starting from ground zero. So instead of buying everybody new turnout gear, we had to modify existing turnout gear. And then once that's all done, then we can start getting the devices and the training done. Part of initial recruit training is a Mayday Firefighter Down class. Uh, what that does is just use a rope. Um, and you use your air bottle as a friction device to help lower you down. This is going to be the first time for some of these guys that actually uses a device that is meant to do this. Um, this device is, has one use, one use only, and that is to get people down safely from an elevated point. Um, and so this will be their first time training on that. They got to do it. They got to do it eight times. And, and the reason we do it eight is, is just proficiency. Um, the more times you can put your hands on it, the better it is. And it doesn't stop at eight. These are their units. They're going to be in their pocket carried uh, 24, 7, 365. But that doesn't mean you can't take them out at the station, work with them. We're going to be doing mandatory, uh, mandatory refreshers every year to just keep them proficient. It's one of those skills that if you don't use it, you lose it. And we want to make sure when the time comes, you know what you're doing. It's really self-rescue, so there are different angles to this. Most of the members of the department probably have not been in that situation, thank God. Um, but it's a little different than repelling. Um, other than a handful of guys that researched it for Lynchburg with us several years ago, most of them have not even had their hands on it till today. All right, has everybody got a harness? All right, what we're going to do, we're going to take our rope and we're going to buckle it. The clip, right hand the buckle, I'm sorry. Unclip it. Set it down in front of you. There's going to be a long strap, it's going to be out front. Your small strap will be just behind that. So it looks like something like that here. With your right foot, step inside your small loop. With your left foot, step in front of the buckle. Reach down. Pull straight up. Done training today. Once you are done training, make sure you buckle your blue leg straps oh. back into there. Because once you set your turnout gear down, you'll notice that this blue strap will fall, fall away when you go to put your gear on the night for the fire run. You're going to be in trouble. That's been away from him this time. So what he's going to do is he's going to extend out, get a big old bite. He's going to come around his um, anchor point, hook to the right, and hook always on top of the rope. He can do one or two attachments now. He can either girth hitch it here, he can pull back, he's going to slide away from the window. Next thing he's going to do is let his anchor catch on his harness real quick. Let it catch on your harness, and he's going to pull back. So Marty's set up with his uh, new Gen 4 harness. He's got 50 foot of uh, lifeline already packed in his harness, ready to go. It's uh, got a hook already here. He's got a uh, lifeline here that's attached to a belay system. So everything's hooked up all the time in the firefighter's gear. It's already hooked up to his uh, harness. So once he gets up here ready to deploy, all he has to do is make his connection to the uh, anchor, 
extend the rope out and then he's ready to bail out the window. In theory, once, they, once the uh, firefighters have done this two to three times, he should be able to do this in less than 17 seconds from the time he decides to bail out of a window to the time he's outside to a safe place. So he's going to take a knee. This is going to be a remote uh, deployment and not the window seal. So the first thing he's going to do is take a knee. He's going with his right hand. You're going to rip open your pocket, pull out the uh, hook. With two hands, you're going to forcefully go forward twice. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to extend the rope firefighter. Extend your rope firefighter. Extend your rope. So he's going to extend his rope out now that he can make a uh, good connection point. So we don't use the hook here other than um, using it as an anchor here. So he's trying to uh, extend it. All you're going to do is come down here. There you go. He's going to ha have his hook always facing to the right. He's going to go under, come back over, and be on top of his rope with the hook. He's going to girth hitch it for safety. Next thing he do, he's going to do is he's going to slide back all the way. He's going to lean back against his harness to make sure it's completely deployed. Now he's going to turn his right shoulder to the window, and you're going to extend your device all the way to the window sill. Bring your XO all the way there. Stand up. Make sure your XO device comes all the way out the window. With your left hand, you're going to grip the um, window seal. Maintain control with your right hand. You're going to forcefully shove your right hand to the 5 o'clock position, roll out, capture hook. Now you're going to roll out. Now get in a good position. At 3 o'clock with your right hand out, slowly lower yourself with a um, controlled sit. Look down your right boot so that you can see where you're going, make sure there's no obstructions. Slack on the system, please. Good to go. So where are they going to be connecting to in a burning building? Anything they can that so they burning, think is structurally sound? Or? Anything in a burning building. We can go into the walls and catch two by fours. We can come to radiators. We can come to beds. We can come to, we can, um, with some of our tools we can use, we can actually come back to door jams, things like that. We can also use our tool driving into the floor and hooking up to that if we need to. So there's a lot of different options. The biggest option, and we'll show that in a minute, is hooking up to the uh, window seal. It's a little bit quicker. We don't have to cross the room. We don't use up our uh, lifeline crossing that room. We only have 50 feet. Generally, if we go to commercial building, floors are 10 to 12 foot tall. So if you're on the fifth floor and you use up 10 foot across, it's only going to get us down to the uh, first floor and not all the way down to the ground. So a lot of times we're going to use the uh, window seal. It's a lot quicker also. We don't have to cross that room. We can hook in, go out. We can reduce that time that we're in that, um, that hostile environment to a little um, fewer seconds and we can get outside to a safer area. You had a lot of helping hands up here, but this is something a firefighter should be able to do on their own? Absolutely. This is um, Once they go to the training, they're going to do about four jumps with a remote access. The, set, the third and the fourth, generally let them go by themselves. And then when they come up to the window seal, the third and the fourth, they're going to do it by themselves. All we're here is a safety officer, just making sure they don't forget. Because this is their first time doing this. We've never had this equipment before. Going out an open window is not something you normally would think you'd want to do. No, and it's not something your body is accustomed to. When you go out head first out of a window, your body's telling you, no, this is not right. If your hook slips, if you don't have a good um, attachment point, you have the fast route to the ground. So it's, it's, not, it's not a natural place to go. It wasn't very difficult. I mean, we've done training like this for a long time, and uh, this is just a new system and a new setup, but this is a much safer way to do it. So actually with this system, it was more comfortable going out the window than in other scenarios that we've had set up in the past. So that's it. So, you know, only if we're in a situation where there's no other way out and we can't go back through the fire because it's getting too hot, that's the only reason we would ever deploy this. So hopefully this will never get deployed in an operational setting. Nice to know you have it, though. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it gives you that little bit of extra peace of mind. Certainly, uh, no one wants to use this piece of equipment. You'd rather go in the way that you, uh, or go out the way that you came in. But this certainly gives you that uh, option in the event things change or uh, your situation gets worse. Uh, that last chance bailout device uh, is, is what it's all about. Just giving you that extra peace of mind that um, you have that uh, training and you have that equipment to uh, help you escape that. We hope we don't have to use this device, but if, if we have to, we've got it, we've got the training, and now we're equipped with it. So add those two together, and we feel uh, a lot better about our personal safety. Check up on that rope just a little bit. There you go. Check up yep. on your rope too a little bit. Come towards your uh, line.
You set to go? All right. Punch down, five o'clock. Right arm out, three o'clock. There you go. All right. Three o'clock. Nice and steady. Good job, Steve. Good job, Derek. Good job, Derek.